Hey Larry. I'm sure you know what happened by now. And I guess you're angry. You must be pretty angry. I'm angry. And I'm scared. I'm terrified, actually. I'm terrified. So, yeah. It happened. I killed your dog. And I'm not, I'm not sorry. I'd been dreaming about killing your dog for, well, since day one. He was first for everything. The amount of time you took for his food, for his walks. He slept with you in bed. He was first for everything. And there I was, you know, loving you and just there, waiting. Because I came next. He came first. So I spent all this time waiting. And And I got really tired of it. You know, there's a guy who might get 20 years, 20 years in jail for killing a few dogs. I mean, I, I just killed one, so I figure, I figure it won't be that bad, but it might be really bad. I might, I might spend so many years in jail, I don't know. I really don't want to go to jail. I really don't. I didn't kill a person. I killed a dog. I mean, since when? Since when does one spend 20 years in prison because of that? You won't recognize me when I come out or if I make it out. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I might. I really want you to come and see me. I don't want to do that alone. All I did was love you. That's all I did. And that stupid dog was always in the way. So, please, please come and see me. You are under arrest for the murder of a dog. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you by the state. Do you understand everything I just said? You just gonna sit there in silence all day? <laughs> now I know this is all just fun and games for you. But I got a fun new little game for you. It's called 20 plus years in prison. How do you like that? Hmm? <laughs> See, that's the only place for people like you. Because you are flat out evil. And I mean, I don't even think you're aware of how evil you are. I mean, in your head, you probably think whatever you're doing is just fine, don't you? But it's not. It's not remotely fine or all right. You are evil.
Now, there's nothing wrong with protecting people. It's what I do. It's what we do. Hell, he's here to protect me from you. And you from me. Because since forever, humanity has needed somebody to watch over them. Somebody to look after them and their things. And a dog, a dog is much more than a thing. You understand? A dog's like family. It's like another child. I got two at home. And trust me, they do not behave. And if I had them here, they would be so happy to get their teeth into you. But they won't. Because I won't let them. Because he won't let me. Because the state won't let us do what we really want to do to you. Do you have any idea how much I am itching to turn off the recorders? To just throw this table out of the way and show you how I really feel about what you do. But I won't. Because there's a judge for that. And she's going to make sure you go away for a very long time. Sure, you might get out one day. But you know what happens inside to people like you? I mean, everybody loves dogs. Nobody likes what you do, except you. So once word gets out of what you did, you won't stand a chance. And the judge is going to make sure of that. <laughs> the state will provide you with an attorney should you be unable to afford one. My family's abandoned me. As soon as they heard I'd been arrested for killing a dog. I've been fired from my job. My friends have abandoned me. I have no income, so of course I need an attorney provided by the state. Okay, I'm your man. My name is Vincent, and I will represent you in this case. When does it start? Very soon. And my first act as your attorney is to recommend a plea of guilty. I'm not guilty. Look, Claire, the state can prove beyond any doubt that you are responsible for the deaths of more than five dogs. Now, in a case like this, a plea of guilty strongly increases the chances of a reduced sentence. The court rewards contrition. I killed a dog. And for that I'm guilty? Every day chickens, pigs, and cows are slaughtered by the billions, and I have committed a crime? If I worked at the meat industry, I'd be found innocent. Look, I understand your frustration, Claire, but you're being charged with a crime. A very serious crime. That's ridiculous. Have you read the papers today? You seen the TV? No. You are the most hated person in this country. In the court of public opinion, you're already guilty. Guilty as charged. Now, I can work with you. I like this case. I think you have a shot. I think these charges are bullshit. Yes, they are. They are. But what about this court and the judge? I... Why? Well, the judge... She's a bit of a ball buster. Sidebar, she's got 11 dogs. That shouldn't affect the case. Don't worry. But... If you plea... If you plead not guilty... This judge is going to attack you aggressively, and she's going to bring in the vegans, the vegan association. Who are they? What do they do? Well, they're an association who believe that, uh, well, for example, if a person boils a dog alive, well, then as punishment, that person deserves to be boiled alive. If a person strangles a dog, Claire, 
You get the idea? This is absolutely ridiculous and okay, it's, don't it's, worry. Insane. it's insane. Just plead it's absolutely guilty. Insane. It is insane. Take a look at the world you're living in. It is insane. But I know how to navigate this court, this system. But I need you to work with me, Claire. Look at me. Claire, look at me. And who are you? I told you who I am. No. Cops get people in jail. They don't get them boiled. What is this? Huh? This is Central Command. Claire. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be what? Central Command. Central Command. Yes. Okay, Claire, you're going to have to I've explain that. I've all about you. It's, it's you, Central Command. It's you. Me? It's people like you. People who know everything and who have all the power. And they control everything. They control Europe and they control Australia and New Zealand and North and South and Central America. Yes? Okay, Claire, listen. I'm your lawyer. I don't know anything about this Central Command system or whatever it is you're talking about. This is not a But listen, this is very this is important. Central Command. It's a precinct, a police precinct, and I'm your lawyer. Look, I understand you're under a lot of stress, but you need to focus. Now listen, I can get you the best deal possible. I can, but I need your help. I need you to do exactly what I say. No ifs, no buts. Before I agree to take your case, I need you to agree to that term. That's non-negotiable. Just get me out of here. I don't care. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. I will get you out of here. We'll do it together. Now. Is there anyone on the outside I can talk to? A no. friend, a colleague, childhood friend, anyone? No. A character witness? No. Okay. Okay. First step. Personality consultant. There's this woman I work with. She's a genius. I'm not doing that. Claire, what did we agree on? I want to rest. Have you been sleeping? Well, as much sleep as you can get in a place like this. Any dreams? Yeah. Some. Good dreams, bad dreams. All of them. Hello, Darla. What am I doing here? You're here for your weekly evaluation. I've already had it. This time there's something new. You're going to have a cellmate. No. I can't have a cellmate. You need to socialize more. You can't be isolated in that cell forever. When will my trial start? Soon. Claire will be joining you today. You can't be in that cell alone forever. I'd rather be alone. She is also a dog killer. You do realize I am not going to be responsible for what happens to her in there. We know that. And you're willing to risk it? We know you're no danger to humans. You say that as if I wasn't human. But you're not human, are you, darling? What am I? A sleepwalker. And there's this force that controls you at night. We know nothing about it. And we have to analyze it. We have to study it. Let's begin your psychiatric evaluation, shall we? Sure. 
Let's get this over with. First question. You enter a house. The house is yellow. It has a red fence and a blue porch. Above the house is a carpet, flying ten meters above it. You place a cup on the carpet. What happens next? The cup spills. Some green liquid comes out of it. Cat walks in, licks it off, walks up the yellow stairs, sits down. Second question. There's a car in the street. There's a blue black stain on it. The stain grows bigger. All of the water in the ocean disappears. The stain turns into an animal. A hand sticks out the window. It has an umbrella. The hand belongs to a man. He walks out, goes towards the red door, knocks three times. The door opens. He walks in, sits on the blue chair, and stares at the car. Third question. There's a man in a jungle. He notices all the plants are handcrafted. He touches the surface of a tree. It is smooth. He looks up at the sun and the light is electric. This jungle is imprinted into a book. Where is the book? It's on my bedside table. I take the book, I open it. The pages are yellow. The writing is blue. I start reading it, but the letters start coming off. They just start fading. It just becomes a blank book. Thank you, Darla. That will be all for today. Let me ask you one last thing. Can you tell me your dreams, Darla? They're just images and sensations and... I don't know, I can't explain it. And when you wake up, do these details become any clearer at all? No. I can't remember anything. Thank you, Darla. I'll call for a guard to escort you back to your cell. Take a seat. babies. I wanted to be with him forever. And then that little thing came along. You know, a tiny, tiny, tiny little puppy. All fluffy and hairy and... <laughs> that was it. The doggy came first for everything. Walk the dog, feed the dog, clean the dog's fucking shit. Thinking, you know what? <laughs> if he sees this, he'll suddenly think, yes, she'll be a great mom. And then he'll give me babies. I needed him. All he cared about was that fucking... <laughs> That fucking stupid dog! So I fucking killed him. Did you hear that? I fucking killed the dog. 
I stopped walking him. I stopped cleaning up his shit. I killed him. Because I had to get Jack back. Because he was mine. I had to get him back. I had to change my fucking destiny. So you know what I did? I fucking killed him. And I ended up here. And I'm probably gonna be here for the rest of my fucking life. But I had to. I had to. Because I had to get Jack back. That's enough. Let's go. I have to share this room with you. I wouldn't answer me either. Being here, it's bad enough, but this is worse. Putting two people in the same room against their will, it's inhumane, and I'm sorry, it's not my choice, it's part of their punishment. What's your name? Natalie. They said your name was Claire. It is. How long have you been here? Can't remember. Three months. Three months. I've been waiting for my trial, although I already know what the outcome is going to be. They're going to find me guilty. It's all the same anyway. Three months and no trial? This is it. It's the end. Yeah. I guess you could say that. How is it in here? The food, 
the cold. It's cold, it's freezing. The food is disgusting. And the yelling at night is just... It's horrible. Have you, uh... Have you been molested? Not yet. I mean, this is in prison. Once we get there, everything's gonna change. Things will be different there. I have a lot of trouble sleeping. What kind of trouble? All rise in the presence of Her Eminence, Judge Hamilton. We will now hear a statement from the prosecution followed by a short obligatory statement from the defense. But before we do, I would just like you all to keep in mind the gruesome nature of this crime. Now this woman, take a good look at her. You all have pets. Many of you have dogs. I have dogs. We love our dogs. Do we really want to live in a world where women like her are just permitted to roam freely, executing dogs left, right, and center as and when she pleases? I think not. And to explain to you further why you should not allow her to roam free, here's Dr. Holden on behalf of the prosecution. Doctor? Darling, uh, Dr. Holden. Judge Hamilton. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I present to you a case of a most gruesome murder. This woman killed someone's most beloved pet. She brought grief to an entire family a cloud of sorrow hovering over a peaceful household. She, and only she, with her actions, cannot be forgiven. What would happen if we did? What would happen if we set this woman free? What would happen to our society? Pain and terror would roam free. We would be living an epidemic of such atrocities. This woman, this woman killed a pet, a faithful and loving animal. And if such things go unpunished, death will come knocking on our door, taking all that is sacred, all that is precious to our hearts. Therefore, I plead with you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, to give this woman a verdict, a guilty verdict, so that she is put away for no less than 20 years, hopefully more. It is your duty as responsible citizens to put away such monster so that she can no longer harm anyone or anything else. Now, before we proceed to the mandatory statement by the defense, I would just like to say a quick word on law enforcement. Now, I know there are many people who aren't fans of law enforcement, but I think we all understand, at least in this courtroom, that it is very necessary. Try and picture a world without law enforcement. Now, I can't. But I can imagine that it would be something like a 
an apocalyptic wasteland where anarchy rules and order is absent in every shape and form. For example, we all joke about not wanting to follow the rules, but how long would we actually last as a society without some form of governance, without some authority, a military presence, or a police force to make sure that we're all kept in check? Now, in the absence of a police force, can you imagine how, how many cases of rape there would be? Already we have daily claims of harassment and rape from all sorts of women and from all sorts of walks of life. Can you imagine how many more we would have if men were just free to do with women as they wish? Now I'm pretty sure that these would grow exponentially. And likewise, women harassing men and so and so and such and such. No, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot do without law enforcement. Because if we did, women like her would roam freely throughout the world, doing as they pleased, executing pets, moving on to our children, and eventually to us. And I cannot allow that to happen. I, for one, will not stand by and permit it. That is why law enforcement is imperative and must never be cast aside. Thank you. Um, now the opposition may present. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this innocent woman had a perfectly normal life until her boyfriend turned his affection to a pet. He selfishly forgot himself in the companionship of a dog. and thoughtlessly neglected the love and care he owed his dear, innocent girlfriend. Together they had planned a family, a future together, that sacred, loving bond of two parents and a child. But that was just a dream, a dream shattered by the arrival into the life of this couple of a canine pet. My client loved her boyfriend and devoted herself to him and him only. She invested her entire life into being the perfect companion. And even in the face of the intolerable, she gave love and care to the man she wanted as a future husband. This woman acted from feelings of despair, from a broken heart, from seeing the promise of a bright future shattered into pieces and eviscerated by this callous, capricious man. This man who let that beautiful future fade away into nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, the pain my client felt sent her into a deep depression and a rage of temporary insanity, which led her to the abyss, to the abyss of this very lamentable act. Now, her broken heart compelled her through fear and hopelessness to lash out at her husband's pet in a desperate attempt to get her life back. That's as simple as it is. Let us.
us not allow this momentary lapse into anguish to put an end to the life, the freedom of this promising young woman. This young woman who has so much to offer to society. If only she could be given a second chance. A chance to redeem herself. Ladies and gentlemen, my client is not insane, but she does need help. In returning to society so that she may heal her heart and start a better life. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. But first of all, I would like to say a few words on behalf of the United Front for violent, bloody, rage, retaliation, and carnage for animals. What do you stand for? What are your goals? We wish to punish humans the way that they have punished animals. For example? For example, if a human boils an animal, we would want that human to be boiled himself. So you're oh. for the death penalty? Well, can I just say here at Central Command, we are not in favor of any such barbaric practices, but carry on. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Imagine you are a small animal. Imagine you are a faithful, playful, trusting, innocent animal. Ignorant of the intentions of the human beings. The earth is your paradise. But a monster, a butcher at large, casts a shadow upon this earthly paradise. And in a moment, your savage freedom is gone. Your freedom to hunt, to reproduce, to live where you want is gone. All of your bodily functions commodified for its well-being. It will bleed you dry until it finds a way to make you question your very existence. And finally, this free spirit is nothing more than a cold piece of flesh served on a plate to the only creature who is deemed worthy of choice. Mankind. Animals are silent. They cannot judge. They have no choice. They have no say. They see you coming, knife in hand, a trail of blood behind leading to this woman. This woman is a monster. And as such, should be judged as a monster. With a term. Which. Burn the witch! 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 Order! Powerful, powerful words. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now hear a short closing statement from both the prosecution and the defense, after which we will hear your verdict. Dr. Holden. Thank you. <clears throat> This, this is all about selfishness and following your heart's darkest desire. A child, a child rips the wings off a fly just to watch it be mutilated, struggling to live its life, just having fun, much like a cat. A cat kills for fun, and a child does likewise. But an adult, an adult can do otherwise. An adult knows the difference between right and wrong. Even a child knows when it's doing wrong. But, but it does not have any restraint. 
If we were to follow our deepest, darkest desires, this world would be riddled with crime and death. But we do not. Because we have self-control. Self-control, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what this woman does not have. She does not have self-control. Claire! Mutilated. Murdered. Destroyed the life of an innocent animal. An animal that has no voice. An animal that needs us to protect. Therefore she ladies and gentlemen of the jury, belongs in captivity, caged, imprisoned, far away from our loved ones. That way, that is the only way our homes will be safe. I hear from the defense. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed a very impressive display. The destruction of innocence. Very effective. But is this all there is to it? Is the mystery of the silence of the beasts really as plain as all that? Is man truly a born criminal? And animals the innocent victims of the demonic behavior of the dominant species on our planet? Mankind has sacrificed animals since the beginning of time. to appease the gods, and in order that the community be protected. Fertility. Strength. Freedom. The right to live. My client saw her dreams wilt and wither away to nothing. She was drowning. And the only way to survive was for her to debase herself by attacking her lover's pet. For no other reason, ladies and gentlemen, than to get his attention. So, the question arises again. Is she guilty? Does she deserve to burn at the stake for what she's done? Or, ladies and gentlemen, does she deserve a second chance? A second chance to live and to strive for a better future. For a better future for all of us. A future in which no animal will be sacrificed to guarantee a better life. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Oh, how thrilling. Claire, it is my pleasure, I mean, it is my uh, privilege to condemn you to 20 years in captivity, Claire. Burn the witch! 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 Bur
You will now enter the prison. Your lives are over. Your human rights null, your space confined. Your activities programmed. You will eat, work and sleep to a strict program. You are now in the hands of the state and part of its holdings. Your family no longer believe you. You have been proven wrong in front of everyone. Your friends don't think you human. All of your words are lies, filth and heresy. Your humanity has been revoked. Your freedom gone. Your social life finished. Your capacity to love is no longer. Your ability to look for a partner, to live a life of love with that partner, is no longer. I bury your chances of love. Now there is only darkness. Your eyes will turn dark and you will despise those people who have the freedom you lack. You will thirst for living blood of those who live those freedoms lightly. When you think of a blue sky or a beautiful park, a restaurant filled with friends laughing, your eyes will darken. You will be capable of the most violent thoughts that you can imagine. Your universe will become smaller, four walls in fact. The planet reduced to a series of corridors in a dining room. I bet you never thought that you'd be here, did you? You never thought that this life would be for you. Still, that peace and tranquility that you aspire to, on a good day here, you may be exempt from a little violence, but of course a normal day should involve a little spitting or kicking on behalf of your peers. Still, you'll be surprised what the body can endure. You no longer have a name, only a number. So now welcome. Here you are, under my care, finally. It wasn't that hard, was it? I hope coming here wasn't as rough after all. You're now mine forever. Do you realize that everything that has happened, happened so that you would fall into my hands? Do you realize that you're here for a reason? I will be watching you. You are now a part of my collection. You belong to me. I will be your everything, your family, your friend. I will be everything that you'll ever have, so you better treat me well. You will give me obedience. You will give me discipline. You will give me love. You will give me everything. You belong to me. Isn't this the way it should have always been? Eventually, you will not remember your previous life. You know, some people come here and they don't have a family or friends. We are all that they have. But once they get here, they start knowing the true embrace of friendship and fidelity. Do you know what fidelity is? Do you know its value? Do you know what it's like to always know where someone is because they can't lie to you? 
They can't deceive you. They are yours for the taking. No running. No crazy escapades. No nothing. This is the straight path. How important is it for you to make your own decisions in life? How painful is it to fail? Isn't it awful to be out in the world with so many choices and so many ways to get it wrong? Have you ever felt the vertigo of making a decision and failing? Well, your freedom to choose is over. I will be making all decisions for you. I will be taking away your pain. You cannot fail. You cannot get wrong. You cannot hurt anymore. There is no more pain. Good morning, Dala. I'm here to make you an offer. Are you from Central Command? We believe that you're a young and productive woman. You have a lot of potential. You don't belong in jail. I know it's been hard for you, but I can make that stop. I'm here to propose an exchange. If you agree to consume recreational drugs, you can go free. First and foremost, you must smoke marijuana for a month. Once it becomes a habit, you will almost be ready for the world. Before we release you, you'll have to consume LSD for at least three times. And you will get to try cocaine. You want me to take drugs? We will also make sure that you consume some of the new designer drugs. They are really good. And if you're willing to try peyote and DMT, you will have our special consideration. Special consideration for what? For a full trust. We'll help you reintegrate into society. We'll give you a job and a place to live in. Why is it so important for me to take drugs? We noticed that you and Claire had no trace whatsoever of any psychotropic substances in your bloodstream. Can't you just let us go like this without the drugs? The deal only comes through if you consume drugs. It's the only offer we're doing, and we'll only make it once. Why? To make you normal. It's your violent behavior that makes you unsuitable for society. You need to take drugs to integrate to the world, to blend in, to be satisfied and stop killing. It's your restlessness that makes you do things. Drugs will take your willpower away. You will be satisfied and happy. No more destruction. Well, I don't want to take drugs. That's something I said I would never do. Now you will, because that's the key to your freedom. I can't take drugs. I don't even smoke pot. Drugs are the most important form of control we have over humanity. People cannot run around free for obvious reasons. We need to pacify people like you. Drugs are an invisible chain, but a very merciful one too. They give pleasure and comfort, and they make people happy. We can make the entire world happy with one swift stroke through a worldwide distribution to make the good come to everyone. I don't want it. It's the only way out. But if I say no, then... It's prison for life.
By having the mind of humanity under control, we can make sure that mostly everyone is pacified and properly set. You should really join in, Dala. There is no reason why you shouldn't. There are lots of advantages. Marijuana can cure cancer. That's what they say. It cures boredom. Takes your mind away. You can't have everything. Sometimes you can't get what you want. But we offer you a lifetime of fun. Great big fun. <laughs> it will be marvelous. I don't want the drugs. It's up to you, Dala. We won't force you. I don't want them. Why? I don't know. I'd rather keep my mind. And you can have it if you stay here. You do have that choice. So what's your answer, Dala? You won't take the drugs. I am very sorry to hear that. I think you're making a big mistake. But it's up to you. Please don't go. Please just stay a little while longer, please. I'm so sorry about what happened. These people are tough. And your sentence is beyond excessive. But once they reach a decision, there's nothing I can do. When can we appeal? We can't. In the event of canicide, federal law doesn't allow for an appeal. I'm afraid your sentence is final. But you know that, don't you? Is that what you're here for? To tell me that my case is hopeless? That my incarceration will be permanent? That I'm done for? No. I'm here to apologize for my failure. But I'm also here to offer you a way of making this experience less traumatic. I can teach you how to escape prison. How? When we sleep, and when we dream, we temporarily leave our physical bodies. Are you serious? There are so many things in life we do to avoid sleeping. I'll teach you how to embrace it. Coffee? No, no. You can't drink that anymore. In fact, from now on, you should avoid anything that doesn't allow you to sleep. You want me to sleep away my time? People spend half their lives sleeping. And whether it's in the comfort of their own bed, or in a five-star hotel, or here, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. I can't believe you came all this way to tell me this. But the sleeping is just the first step. But dreaming, dreaming is the key to unlocking his door. Dreaming is like living. What we experience seems real. Every night you have an opportunity. An opportunity to be somewhere else entirely to do anything you want. You can spend time with your friends, you can drive a car, you can swim in the ocean. 
and the fact that you have no control, that just makes the experience more real. What about lucid dreams? They don't exist. You're talking about imagination, not dreaming. You can use your imagination if you want. I mean, you'll do anything to get out of this hellhole, right? But I prefer dreaming. It's more akin to a real experience. If you want to use your imagination, go right ahead. But my advice? Dream away. How can you come and tell me this? Huh? I'm rotting in prison and your big solution is if you dream it almost feels like an experience? Is that all that's left? Your big solution is for me to dream away my time? I'm gonna sleep anyway. Dreaming is an open door. All you have to do is walk through it. Live to dream. Talk. We need to fucking talk!